In this video, we will be talking about work done by a variable force. A variable force is a force that is a function of position, and we shall write such a force like that. Now, an example of a variable force is the spring force. So, spring force is a force exerted by a spring on a particular object, and it is defined by the so-called Hooke's law. Now we are interested in the mathematical definition of the work done by such a variable force and also we will give a particular geometrical interpretation for the work. To get an idea about how to compute work done by a variable force look at the following case, a picture here, a schematic diagram. You have an object that is acted upon by a force that is obviously dependent on the coordinate of the object. So when the object is at x equals to 2, the value of the force is f evaluated at x equals to 2. And as it moves to x equals to 5, the value of the force, or the magnitude of the force, that is acting on this object now is f evaluated at x equals to 5. If such a force is displacing an object from this point to that point, how do you compute the work done by such a force? Now, if you guess that the force, the work done by such a force will be something like this force times the displacement, what do you put here? So obviously, this definition no longer holds. So this is incorrect. Now, the correct definition is given by the following. The work done by this force in moving the object from x equals to 2 to x equals to 5 is given by this integral. It's an integral of that force function with respect to x with the initial coordinate taking the lower limit and the final coordinate taking the upper limit of the integral. Next, let's look at an example of a variable force the spring force given by this Hooke's law. So what is Hooke's law? So in this diagram you have a spring that is connected to an object and the spring in this case is not stretched. It is at its rest length so it is not compressed or stretched. Now let's assume I stretch the spring by pulling this object to the right with some force F. So here the spring is in a stretched state because the, it, is, it has been pulled with a force F and the amount of stretch is x1 meters. So of course at this point what the spring would do it would pull the object back in an opposite direction with the force, say, Fs. And this force Fs, the force exerted by the spring on the object, is proportional to the amount of stretch, and it's heading in an opposite direction to the direction of displacement. So when we turn this inequality to an equality, we get the force or the spring force because it is a force, so it's a vector. It's given by minus a constant times the displacement vector. Now, this minus indicates that this force, the spring force, is trying to pull the object back to its original position. So, for that reason, spring force is also known as a kind of a restoring force because it tries to restore the original state, original position of the object. And because the direction of the spring force and the direction of this displacement which is heading to the right are opposite to each other, there is a negative sign here. Now what is this k? This k is called the spring constant of the spring. It has a unit of newtons per meter and the larger the spring constant k the harder it will be to stretch the spring so that is the significance of this 
spring constant, which is measured in the units of Newton per meter. So how do we calculate the work done by this spring force? So using the definition introduced earlier, the work done by the spring force, as it does work on this object, as the object moves from x equals to 0 to x equals to x1, is given by the integral of that spring force, which we introduced a few minutes earlier, minus kx dx, with the lower limit of 0 and the upper limit of x1. And we know how to integrate an integral of x dx. You can take that k out because it is just a constant. And when you integrate x dx, you're going to get x squared over 2 from the lower limit of 0 to upper limit of x1. And substituting the limits, you'll get x1 squared over 2 in the unit of joules. So that is the work done by this spring force in this situation. Now if we look at the definition of work, it is given as an integral of force with respect to x. Now from calculus, we know that such an integral can be represented by an area under a particular graph. So in this case, the graph will be the force position graph. So let's say you have a graph that look like that. And an integral such as the one given here with let's say a lower limit x1 and upper limit of x2 is given by an area shaded here. So this is x1 and that is x2. So that is the geometrical interpretation or graphical interpretation of this result. So this integral represents the area under graph between x1 and x2. So if you are given a force position graph and you are asked to determine the work done by a force in displacing an object between two positions, let's say x1 and x2, all you have to do is to determine the area under that graph between those two coordinates. Let's look at this problem. An object is attracted towards the origin with a force of that nature. Now note that there's a minus sign there, so that means the direction of the force is opposite to the direction of displacement. x being the distance from the origin, so how much is the work done? by the force as the object moves from x equals to 1 to x equals to 3 meters from the origin. So from the definition, it is the integral of that force with respect to x. So you can take that minus 8 out because they are constants. x cubed dx with a lower limit of 1 and upper limit of 3. So we can evaluate this. When you integrate x cubed, you get x power 4 over 4 limits 3 and 1. So let's substitute the limits. So you get 3 power 4 over 4 minus 1 power 4 over 4 in the unit of joules and it will be minus 160 joules. So that is the work done by this force when the object moves from x equals to 1 to x equals to 3 meters from the origin. Problem 2. The graph below shows the applied force on a 2 kg object as it moves from rest along the x-axis from the coordinate of x equals to 0, the origin that is, to x equals to 5. So from here and ends up there. Let's first calculate the work the force has done on the object when the object reaches x equals to 4 meters. So from the graphical interpretation of work, remember work is given by an integral of the force function with respect to x. And in this case, we are interested in from 0 to 4. That means all we have to do is to calculate this entire area, excluding this area. The area of the graph from x equals to 0 to x equals to 
4. So that should be pretty easy. So the area from x to x equals to 4 is the work done by the force as it moves the object from x equals to 0 to x equals to 4. So there are two areas. The first one is the triangle. And the area of the triangle is half times the base, which is 1, times the height, which is 4. And the second one is this rectangle right there. The base is 3 units, and the height is 4. So 3 and 4. 3 times 4. And that's going to be 2 plus 12, which is 14 joules. So that is the answer for part A. Part B asks you to calculate the speed, the object's speed when it gets to x equals to 4. Of course, what relates work to speed? But before that, speed is, as we know, it's related to kinetic energy. So we have to use this work kinetic energy theorem here. Now remember, work kinetic energy theorem is a general theorem, so it is applicable to both constant force and variable force. So the work done as the object moves from 0 to 4 equals the kinetic energy when the object is at 4 minus the kinetic energy when the object was at x equals to 0. Now we know what the work is. It was 14 joules from part A. Kinetic energy at x equals to 4, we don't know. We only know that when we have the speed, but that is exactly what we want to calculate. Now, the kinetic energy at x equals to 0 is 0 because we know the object is moving from rest along the x-axis at from x equals to 0. That means it wasn't moving at x equals to 0, so that means kinetic energy there is 0. So using the definition of kinetic energy, Kinetic energy is half times mass times the speed at that point squared. Now we know what the mass is. The mass is 2 kilograms, so that is 2. And speed at x equals to 4 is what we want to find, and we can find that. So speed at speed of the object as it reaches x equals to 4 is the square root of 14 meter per second, which is about 3.74 meter per second. So that is the answer for part B. That solves the problem. I hope you find the content of today's video useful. If so, please like and subscribe to this channel for more videos on introductory physics and mathematics. It would certainly help the channel to grow. Have a great day and thanks for watching.